Hi everybody, I'm going to make what I call meatloaf hamburgers. So I typically make uh, meatloaf um, probably at least twice a month and uh, I have issues with eggs. So on occasion I'll try eating eggs and we'll do okay with them. But for the most part, I typically end up having um, an allergy to the eggs. So I don't really throw any eggs in because I want to be able to eat this too. So I'm going to actually make them into hamburger patties and I'm going to put a sauce on them just like their meatloaf. So I've got two pounds of 90% um, grass fed beef in here. And what I'm going to do is throw some dry seasoning in with it. And then I'm going to make a sauce and I'm actually going to put some of that sauce in it. And we're going to make the patties with the sauce in it. And then I'm going to top it with that sauce as well. First, I want to get uh, my vegetables started because I'm actually just making dinner for tonight. Whenever I do these videos, I'm really truly just making dinner for myself and for um, Sophie and then for John. So uh, I'm going to start my vegetables, which the first thing I'm starting with is a sheet cake pan full of um, Brussels sprouts that I just cut the stem off and cut in half. I've also put chopped onion and then I have uh, sugar, no sugar added, uncured, turkey bacon. I took two strips and chopped them into little pieces and mixed it all around. And then I'm going to throw these in a 350 degree oven, which I'm also going to throw the hamburgers in. So I'm going to get these going in that oven. And the brand of turkey bacon that I use is this Garrett Valley and it is purchased at Fresh Time. So they also sell it at Whole Foods. I have not found a um, sugar-free, no sugar added, um, uncured turkey bacon at Deerberg's or at Schnucks. So I always have to get it at Fresh Time or I have to get it at uh, Whole Foods. So I have my skillet here and my big skillet. And what I've done is I've put two um, strips of that turkey bacon. Actually, that's three strips of turkey bacon and then a little bit of the chopped onion. And I'm gonna heat this on medium a little bit above medium. I'm taking a bag of green beans, which I thawed. I don't, I didn't microwave them. I just thawed them so that they're not frozen any longer. And then I'm going to take a, ba a bag of um, rice cauliflower. I'm going to use the rice cauliflower in my hamburger patties. So I've got one bag that's almost gone. And then I'm going to do another full bag of this. And I'm just throwing it in my skillet. And inside that skillet with the turkey bacon and with the onion, I also have some avocado oil. So I'm gonna get this kind of all mixed around. It is on, again, it's on medium, a little bit above medium heat. I will get to a point where I'll go a little bit below medium heat, but I wanna to start to see some browning before I do that. So, I got my vegetables going and since I've got my vegetables going, now I can start with, uh, with my hamburger. So again, I have 90% uh, lean um, uh, beef that's grass-fed beef that I bought from Whole Foods today. And the first thing I'm going to add is some rice cauliflower. So this is just going to help to kind of keep it all combined. So basically, this is my oatmeal. I'm using rice cauliflower for that. And again, it's just that frozen rice cauliflower that I bought at Whole Foods, but you can pick it up at Deerberg's in the frozen food section. Next thing I'm going to add that I'm going to be pretty liberal with is my house seasoning. And this house seasoning is something that I got from Paula Dean, but then I added three ingredients to it. And if you don't have my house seasoning recipe, then you need to go out to YouTube and just type in Debbie Portel. And there's a video on how to make that house seasoning. So I use a lot of this house seasoning and there's several different things in here. So I'm going to really get this hamburger well seasoned and I'll probably add, I'm going to add some to my sauce too. So a little bit in there and then I'm also going to add it to the sauce. Now I have a combo of yellow mustard and Frank's hot sauce and I'm going to just dump that on there. And we're going to do a little bit of both because I like having both in there. And then what I really think helps to make these taste so tasty is these little minced onions, just the, got a little hot sauce in it, but these little bitty minced onions. They're just super small little dried minced onions. It really flavors the hamburger. So I'm gonna take those minced onions and go all through it. And that kind of helps keep it combined too. I'm also gonna put some of those inside the sauce. 
Um, and then what I did was I just really thick chopped a t uh, an onion because Sophie and I like cooked onion, but John doesn't like cooked onion. So I made really big pieces of chopped onion. So that way, as he's eating it, if he doesn't want to eat the piece of onion, he doesn't have to. So he can kind of cut that out. Okay, now I'm just going to start kind of getting this worked around. Then I'm going to start working my sauce, but I'm going to put a little bit of tomato sauce in this as well. So I'm just getting all this kind of combined. And it's that riced cauliflower and the seasoning and then my thick sliced onion. And you may or may not use all that onion. And you can just kind of use what you want. And if there's more than what you think you need, then just take that and set it aside. I'm going to throw it out. Okay. So I've got this somewhat combined. Now I'm going to start focusing on my sauce that I'm going to do with it. So setting this aside, just so you know, what I have ready and waiting for me is a cookie sheet. It's, it's a sheet cake pan, which I use for pretty much everything I do. And then I have a cooling rack inside here. These are, I get at Williams-Sonoma. Um, you could probably get them anywhere, but I just go to williamsonoma.com. They just have that stuff so easy to find. Uh, or you could just go to the store. Uh, okay, so to start with the sauce, I'm going to do a tomato, just canned tomato sauce. So I've got that set aside here. So I'm going to take that and basically throw a whole can in there because I can use the sauce for other things. So I don't mind making a, a whole lot of extra sauce because I can just start doing it with doing other things with it. I also have fire roasted chopped tomatoes with garlic and I'm going to throw like two handfuls in there, maybe two and a half. Okay. Just want to make it kind of a thick and chunky sauce. And then um, let me get some napkins here. Then I've got those minced onions that I was talking about. Just the little bitty onion flakes. Those are so tasty in the sauce. So I'm going to sprinkle those all through this. There is no science and no art to this. I'm just showing you how I combine things and just throw a bunch of things together to make a good taste. I've got a little apple cider vinegar to get a little tart in it. And then, of course, I have my house seasoning. Again, remember, if you don't have the house seasoning, just go out to YouTube. I've got a video for my house seasoning. Just type in Debbie Portel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe because it'll send you a message whenever I have a new video. So I put quite a bit of the house seasoning in there. Now I'm going to take my stevia. And I'm going to put two scoops. This is just the Now Foods Pure Stevia. I'm going to put two scoops in there. And then I'm going to take... Cayenne pepper, and I'm literally just going to go like this. All I'm doing is putting a pinch of it in there. I just want a little bit of a kick to it, so I'm just going to throw that in there. And then I'm going to stir this guy up, and I taste it. And then I may not like it. It may be too tomatoey. And if it's too tomatoey, then i got to start adding some different stuff just to change it up a little bit. You know, maybe I need to add a little bit of hot sauce. That's why I add the mustard. That's why I add the apple cider vinegar. That's why I add the stevia. I just want to kind of produce just a different flavor. I don't want it to be just like an Italian version, you know, so I want it to have some tang like it's ketchup, but it has a little bit of kick to it, to, you know, for it. So, so I've got always have a bunch of spoons around. I'm just going to, oh, that's good. That's really good. Okay, so I need a little more house seasoning because I can tell that it needs a little bit more garlic and then I need a little bit more of that minced onion and I need direct garlic and direct pepper for it. So I'm going to go with black pepper and then I'm going to do... Just a little bit of garlic powder. It's not like I'm going to use a ton of it, but just a just a little bit to give me a little bit of flavor. Okay, we're going to stir this again. If it feels like it's too tomatoey and you just want a little more bite, also put a little bit of that apple cider, more of that apple cider vinegar in there. That'll give you a little bit of kick too. Another thing that's good to add to it is the Simple Girl barbecue sauce. That's made with stevia, so that's okay to have. 
It'd be a good thing to put in with this. You don't need a lot. You'd need like two tablespoons just to give it an extra change. Just a little change of pace, a little change of flavor. That's why I put that mustard in there. Oh, that's good. Okay. Now I'm getting like flavors through it. That's good. Okay. I'm going to do some parsley in there just because it's pretty. But also because parsley is a great source of potassium. So it's a good way to sneak some potassium in. So I'm going to throw that parsley in there again, mostly just because I'm trying to make it look pretty. But it will be a great way to get some extra potassium in. I can hear that my turkey bacon, onion, rice cauliflower, and green beans are cooking behind me. So I'm just going to move them around in the skillet. They're not burning or anything. It'll be a while before they burn or want to start browning. But I just like keeping them moved around so no one particular area starts to burn. Now, if you want to go a little faster on that, just put a lid on it. But I just kind of let it sit here and cook, you know, while I'm doing this. Okay, so now I've got my hamburger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this sauce and throw it inside the hamburger. It's not a ton, just a little bit. I'm gonna kind of make the hamburgers with the sauce in it. And it really makes the hamburgers taste kind of, you know, just really juicy. I get a couple napkins because I'm about to make a mess with my hands. And then I'm gonna baste the top of the hamburgers with that sauce. It's so good. There's really no science to this. You could make these with kind of any type of sauce you want. You know, I mean, if if you do have a marinara sauce that you really like and you want to go an Italian way with them, go an Italian way with them. If you have kind of a Mexican vibe that you like, then go a Mexican way with them. There's, there's really no rhyme or reason. I've always tried to make ketchup, and I've just tried to kick up the ketchup. You know, made like kind of a little spicier, sweet tasting ketchup. That's what I normally do. And if you haven't ever made ketchup, number one, you really can't buy ketchup. They don't really have unsweetened ketchup. I think you can get it on Amazon. Um, but in terms of it being completely unsweetened, they, they really don't sell it. They didn't sell it. I looked at Whole Foods again today, and they didn't. Um, so, you, you know, it's very easy to make ketchup. You're just going to need to get a little bit of tomato paste and a little bit of tomato sauce and just start feeding different, you know, uh, ingredients in there. Um, look at your bottle of ketchup and read the ingredients and leave all the bad stuff out and then just put that in yours. Another thing you could do is go out on Pinterest and there's tons of different um, recipes for how to make ketchup. So I'm going to make these a pretty decent size. Um, and granted, I'm making them into the shape of a hamburger, which I don't really need to do. You could make them into little loaves if you wanted to. But I'm just going to make them look like little hamburgers. And then I'm going to sauce them up with that sauce that I made. And I do try my hardest to make them about the same size because we want them to kind of cook in there the same amount of time. So make those like that. Now I am going to make a couple for Sophie down here, so I will end up having to take them out of the oven, you know, first. If you don't like that many onions in there, then don't put that many onions in there. By all means, you can certainly chop your onions smaller, but like I said, John doesn't love uh, eating the onion for the texture, but he actually likes the taste of the onion. So... I like to cook things with the onion in it for him because he enjoys the taste of it, but he just doesn't like the texture of it. So I just cut them up whenever I'm making something, you know, for them. I just cut them up super, super big so he can get the taste of it. And Sophie loves onions. She literally eats them raw. And I'm always like, oh, Sophie, I, how are you doing that? But she does. So um, she doesn't have any problem with eating onions. So if I cook something and it has onions in it, she never takes it out. So, okay, so this is, I've got six here from two pounds. However, this could be way more than that. 
if you notice, there's two ginormous ones at the very top. That's for the ginormous person that lives in this house. And he'll probably eat both of those in one sitting. So um, the two little baby ones will be for Sophie. And then I'll have, uh, well, probably one of these baby ones will be for Sophie. And then I'll have one um, that I might chop up, you know, maybe with some noodles and put it in her lunch for tomorrow. So sometimes she takes hot uh, food in this little container that we have. And so I might do that for her tomorrow. Okay, so now I'm going to add my... Um, sauce that I made that I'm excited about that tastes really good and I'm just going to baste the top of these guys with it so let me get a good spoon for that I feel like there is a special spoon for everything so it's money well spent if you spend some time at Williams Sonoma because when you're cooking you should enjoy the utensils that you're using because it makes cooking more enjoyable I love prep dishes I love measuring cups and there's a company called Juliska J-U-L-I-S-K-A and oh I just love their stuff just beautiful stuff that's where all my little prep bowls come from all these little prep bowls that look like little flowers I just love them they're so cute and their products are just such a high quality I get them online but there's a store down from my old uh, location in Ladue that has them and oh just beautiful stuff but I just get the little baby prep bowls so they're not quite as expensive as getting a full set of dishes but maybe someday I'll buy myself a full set of dishes from them. Because, you know, I like spending money on stuff like that because that stuff is the kind of stuff that I'm going to hand down to Sophie. I, I don't mind spending money on stuff like that. Good dishes, that's something that Sophie will have. You know, I have good Christmas dishes and I have good Thanksgiving dishes. And, you know, she'll have that someday and she'll be able to use those with, with her family. You know, that's a good thing to hand down. You know, I, I don't mind. And if it's classic... It'll translate through many, many different generations. So you guys see how I'm basting these? All right. I like to decorate as much as I like to cook. So that's why I'm talking about dishes. I love decorating a table. I love decorating my house. I love working in my yard, working on the outside of my house. As long as my dogs are around, I'm happy. Okay, so I've basted these guys really good. Now what I'm going to do is save. The reason why I made so much is because I'm going to save some of that. And then when this gets taken out of the oven, we'll have a little bit more that I'll kind of top it with. You know, and this bakes so good. It almost caramelizes. And don't be afraid. It might like burn a little bit on the edges, but it's going to be so good. So good. Oh, yes. I, Allison, I like jewelry too but i that's one thing i will not spend money on myself for i will not buy myself jewelry uh but no i definitely the jewelry i do have i'll definitely pass down to sophie as well okay so i'm going to put these in a 350 degree oven i have the brussels sprouts in there i have a convection oven so i'm going to hit the convection button but don't worry i've spent half my life without a convection oven it works just fine to double everything up it just might take a little bit longer and you might have to go up to 375 if you don't have a con convection oven instead of 350 because the more food's going to make it to where you're going to need a little bit more uh temperature so i'm going to throw these in the oven and i'm going to put them on the bottom shelf and then halfway through i'm going to put them on the top shelf and i'm going to move my vegetables around here those little hamburger meatloafs are probably going to cook for at least 45 minutes. So, yeah, that might take a little bit of extra time, but, you know, it's worth it. It's, it's worth it. So I uh, took some of that uh, turkey bacon and just chopped it up. And so what I'm going to do is, is at about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes in, I'm going to take these little pieces of turkey bacon and I'm going to put them on top of those so that we get like crispy, crunchy turkey bacon on top of that tomato sauce, little baby meatloaf hamburger. And then I would just plate it up with this green bean and uh, rice cauliflower. And then I'll take the Brussels sprouts and just spread the Brussels sprouts around the plate too. 
And that's what I would do. That's what, that's what our meal is going to be. When it's finally finished, I'll take a picture of it so that everybody knows. Um, and uh, there's really no recipe to it because it's there's no rhyme or reason. At some point, maybe I'll sit down and like actually write a recipe to it. But, you know, I, you can throw kind of whatever you want in it. Like, you know, I, I've got some basics that I always use, like, you know, the little onion flakes and Frank's, Frank's Red Hot and, you know, things like that. My house seasoning, a little bit of stevia to sweeten it up. But you can you can go whatever direction you want to go with it. This is just mostly to give you the idea that you don't just have to brown hamburger. You know, you don't just have to make a meatloaf. You know, this is just another way of doing it, making little individual ones. Another another thing is, is if you have some picky people in your house, you can make those little individual ones and kind of put a little different stuff in each one too. So this is what we do with our nutrition programs. This is what we do at Integrity is we try to help you to understand that Eating clean and being healthy doesn't mean that you have to eat everything bland every day. And the best way to stick with a healthy lifestyle is to learn how to prep your food ahead of time and be prepared throughout the week, but also to learn how to make food that tastes great. If you're interested in getting more information on a five-month nutrition program with myself, where I will tell you exactly what to eat, I'll tell you where to buy it from, I'll tell you how to prepare it, I'll tell you what to order when you eat out, what you should be drinking, and any vitamins and minerals you should be taking, and if you have to travel, exactly how you should handle the traveling. And we will meet every three weeks, and we'll go back and forth and back and forth, and the whole point will be to try to teach you how your body is metabolizing food and what are the, gonna be the best foods for you for the season that you're in. Maybe that's a weight loss season. Maybe that's a season to lower your blood pressure. Maybe that's a season that you just want to learn how to cook better and you want to learn how to be healthier for your family. Whatever it is, I'll help you to make this a healthy lifestyle, not just achieve short-term goals. But we will achieve short-term goals as well. If you're interested in a free personal fitness assessment with any of our personal trainers at any of our three locations in Clayton, Creefcore, or O'Fallon, Missouri, you can call us at 636-299-2208. Or again, remember to take a look at integritytraininggroup.com. Take a look at Debbie Portell, P-O-R-T-E-L-L, -L, on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And all of these videos will be saved out there and you can link to them and play them back and forth and also share them with friends and family. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe and thank you for watching and God bless.